Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with the Mishnah Yumi, Masechet Gitin, we're up to Perek Ched Mishnah Vav, today's Mishnah Yot should be Le'ilu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbai, Veliyahu Ben Burcha Yisrael, Ovchana Bad Meriam, Sasson Ben Raya, and Yoshua Ben Shifra, Menuchatam Megan Eden, Amen, and Le'avdi Ben Chaim Lechaim, and the Refua Shelemav, Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Betoch Shach Olei Yisrael. The Mishnah now teaches about another case where the penalties that we spoke about in the earlier Mishnayot apply. When a man dies without children, there is a mitzvah for his brother to marry his widow, perform ibum, or to release her from this bond through the ceremony of chalitza, removal of the shoe. Chalitza breaks the bond with her husband's brothers and permits her to marry anyone she wishes. An exception to this rule is where the widow is related to the brother in a way that makes her forbidden to marry him. For example, she is his wife's sister. This is discussed in Mesechet Yevamot, chapter 1, Mishnah 1, and it brings down a list of the 15 forbidden relatives who can fall to a brother for ibum. Such a woman is known as an erva, or plural, arayot. An erva is exempt from the mitzvah of yibum and does not need chalitza either. And if there were two wives and one of them was an erva, both widows are exempt from yibum and chalitza. This is again in Yevamot chapter 1, Mishnah 1. In the words of that Mishnah, an erva exempts her co-wife from yibum and chalitza. Our Mishnah discusses a case where a man with two wives died without children. One of these wives was an erva to his brother, making both her and her co-wife exempt from Yibum. The co-wife then went and married out of the family, but it was later discovered that the erva wife was never legally married to her husband. This means that the co-wife was not, was the, this means that the co-wife was really the only wife of the man who died, and that she was therefore really not permitted to marry out of the family. The Mishnah begins, Kol mutarot. With all the arayot about whom the sages said that if their husbands die without children, their co-wives are permitted to remarry without receiving Gibu Mechalitza, Halchu Atzarot Ha'elu V'Nisiu, if the co-wives went and married other men, V'Nim Tzu Elu Ailoniot, and then these arayot were found to be Ailoniot, girls who never, who were never mature, and Ailonit is a girl whose body fails to develop typical female characteristics, and who therefore can never have children, who were therefore never actually married to their husbands, because if a man marries a girl without realizing she is an Ilonit, they are not considered married because the marriage was based on a mistake. Had he known she was an Ilonit, he never would have married her, as Tosfut say on page 46b, Mesechet Gitin. Therefore, if it is discovered after the husband died that the erva is an Ilonit, it turns out that she was never legally married to her husband, and she did not exempt the co-wife from Yibum or Chalitza. The co-wife therefore was not permitted to marry someone else. The law is as follows. Tetzeh Mizeh O Mizeh. The co-wife who remarried must leave this one and that one, meaning she must get divorced from her second husband and may not marry her first husband's brother in Yibum. Rather, she must perform chalitza with him. The and all of these penalties stated in the previous Mishnah applied her as well because she should have made sure that the other wife was not an Ilonit before getting remarried with the chalitza. Although it cannot be known for sure that a woman is an Ilonit until she reaches a certain age, even before then she will show some signs of being a possible Ilonit. The co-wife is therefore penalized because she should have not remarried without performing chalitza until she knew for sure that the erva was not an ailonit. And the Rav does tell us, page 22a, Mokminan la, This mission is established like the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. The Amar who said Yesh Mamzor Michai Ve'Lavin that a Mamzor can come out of a biblical prohibition. Ve'Na Lecha and that is not the Halacha, <coughs> and that is in a Mishnah Vav. Now the Lord in Ilonit is not considered to have been married to her husband can lead to yet another situation in which a co-wife who thought she was free to remarry becomes subject to all these penalties. This is Mishnah Zayin. Hakoneset Yivimto. If someone married his brother's widow, his Ivama, to fulfill the mitzvah of Yibum, and her co-wife, because the man who died had two wives, her co-wife thinking she was not free to marry out of the family, because when a man dies without children and leaves two wives, Yibum or Chalitza with one of them frees the other one to remarry, as the Rav explains in Yivamot chapter 4, Mishnah 11. So she, thinking she was not free to marry out of the family, went and married someone else. But in said she I don't need, but it was later found that this wife, who had performed Yibum was an Ilonit, who was therefore never really married to the brother who died. Since she was never married to him, her Yibum was meaningless, and her co-wife was therefore not freed from her Yibum ban, and is still the Yivama of her first husband's brother. 
The law is as follows. The Koif who remarried must leave both this one and that one, meaning she must get divorced from her second husband and may not marry her first husband's brother in Yibum. Rather, she must perform Chalitza with them. And all these ways, all these penalties stated in Mishnah 5 apply to her as well. Because before getting remarried with that Chalitza, she should have made sure that the other wife was not an Ailunit. And again, like we discussed in the previous Mishnah. And that is an Abutai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Amen Amen.